I asked these two guys who uh, really, if COVID has exposed anything for us, it's called us back to having the core mission of the church to be disciple making. And it doesn't matter your church size, that is the call for all of us in this room. And uh, Matt, you guys have started on this process as an eldership, as a staff, and for you personally. Uh, just tell us one thing that you guys have done to move towards disciple making in this new season. Yeah, we just felt the growing conviction over the last 18 months that and we got to get back to the core of doing this. Where do we start? So this summer we spent time, we spent multiple weeks just casting vision for our church. Hey, here's what we want to do. Here's what God's calling us to be, what he's calling us to do in our church. We want to do this. We want to do this. We want to do this. We want to reach people all over northern Colorado. Here's how it's going to happen. And I know the first question you're going to ask is, okay, what's first and, and where, when do we start? Well, I was really convicted. I didn't want to connect people to another program, but I wanted to connect them to our purpose and their purpose, which is making disciples, and then laid it out to the church. Hey, we're going to go as far and fast with all this stuff that we've painted. We'll go as far and as fast as you want to take us. So we're, where we're going to start is with leadership training. We, we don't know who our leaders are now. Everything is shifted up, but we know you're out there. So it's time to step up. From now on, we will no longer be a staff-led church. From now on, we are a church-led church. The staff will direct us. Here's the direction we're going. We're going this way. Here's the vision. But we're going to be led together. We're going to do this side by side. So we started off with leadership training. Let's, let's train people up, equip them, Ephesians 4, and then just release them. And we thought, man, I don't know if this is going to go anywhere. It's August. There's things to do in Colorado. Uh, but let's try it. I even said to our church, like, hey, I don't even know how, how this is going to go. It might not even be any good at first because we're just starting. This yeah. is beta. And uh, we thought if we get 50 to 70 people into some leadership training in August, well, Jesus started with 12 and turned that into billions. We need more of a head start. 50 or 70, that's great. We can start with multiplication. We had 275 people go through it in August and said, hey, I want to lead. I want to own the vision of our church. Let's go. So um, the leaders are ready. They just need to be called to it, yeah. equipped, and then released. Let's let them lead. Drew, you've been on this journey a lot longer than a lot of us before COVID. Your heart has been stirring for disciple making. Uh, and then God's even revealed a really unique mission for you guys before you reveal that tell us the one thing that you're going as you reflect on this season about disciple making that has made the biggest impact for you uh, i think it's the a shift that we heard a little bit earlier uh this shift from teaching to training there's just remarkably different things and they happen in different contexts and teaching can fuel that but we've been settling for too much of that and so as we where will really helped us was in the context of this book to be able to celebrate and honor all that the church has been in different generations and the way god has used just really impactful people to meaningfully make a difference but as we as we try to do what we heard earlier and really empower and come to the realization that the local church as it is the hope, but the container of it is not large enough to contain the mission of the next generation that has to launch out from here. We've got to shift from teaching to training. How do we hand simple tools that they can employ quickly, master over time, and pass on just as quickly? These are the kind of things that we're trying to learn and explore, the kind of questions we're asking now. Then God birthed something new in you guys through this season. Tell us a little bit. This is an audacious thing from the Spirit. Uh, my buddy asked me, what's my 100-year vision? What's the thing you're going to do that's going to outlast you? And uh, one, of the reason, one of the things that brought us to Las Vegas 10 years ago was uh, Nellis and Creech Air Force Base. That if you want to send disciple makers all over the world, you need a transient place. Transiency really is a struggle if you're in the midst of building an organization or institution, developing leaders as soon as they're developed, they go. But if you want to send disciple makers around the world, it's actually the perfect place. The challenge is how do you hand with great potency and effectiveness tools that they feel competent to use with an I can do this mentality with enough reps and repeats and a coaching kind of cycle that's actually training that wherever they go, they're not only portable enough to go with them, but they are versatile enough to find their way into lots of local churches without having to shift major programs or church DNA when they get there. Mm -hmm. So now God's moved from Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas, and where has the movement gone now? Uh, we've got some folks in Colorado, we've got some folks in Germany, we've got some folks in Illinois. We're, we're really just beginning. You know, in movements, you go slow to go fast, and so we're really trying to build DNA core right from the very beginning. But we're starting to see some fruit, and our prayer is that 100 years from now, there's a multiplying movement of disciple makers in every community that surrounds an Air Force Base that's traceable to Las Vegas in the 2020s. Come on, man. Come on. That is the spirit of God stuff, dude, that we want to see.